When you complete, just message, ma'am will start. Start, sir. A very Thank warm and beautiful morning to all of you. I am Professor Jayshree Chauhan, Department of ENTC, MIT Coder, Bashi. I welcome today's speaker, Mr. Atul Kejkar, Director, Divine Technology Private Limited, Pune, and Mr. Ruban Asif Sayed, Application Engineer, Divine Technology Private Limited, Pune. And I welcome our TPO head, Vital Jaktab sir, our principal sir, and all the respective students. So now I would request to Mr. Jivraj Bode sir to please play Vishwashanti prayer. We are not leaving behind our legacy of MIT Quora. So we will start our program with the God grace. I request Bode sir to please play Vishwashanti prayer. Thank you, Bodhi, sir. 
distinguished guests, respected principal sir, moderators, coordinators, teaching and non-teaching staff, and my dear participants. Wish you a very good morning. I, Professor Jayashree Chauhan, extend a warm welcome on behalf of MIT College of Railway Engineering and Research, Varshi. Today, we all have gathered here to announce our knowledge about a very important topic, advanced testing technology in electronics and other industries. I am thoroughly pleased to witness you all here. In this webinar, it's my privilege to welcome you all on behalf of MIT Coral. I welcome all the participants in this workspace. We are truly delighted with your presence. The MIT Coral aims to achieve great heights this webinar intends to. Now I would like to request Dr. Vishnu Suryavanshi, sir, to please give the introduction of today's speaker. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning to one and all. Today's speaker, Mr. Atul Kutsrekar, sir. He is my best friend, Director, Rewind Technologies Private Limited. Sir has completed BE Electronics and Telecommunication from COEP Pune. Sir is having 20 years of experience in the development of Rewind Technology Private Limited. This technology, Rewind Technology, really known as Rewind, was incorporated by a small group of highly qualified technocrats with sound business acumen and strong technical skills. Rewind was set up with a mission to provide support, services, equipment, components, and tools to India market with best-in-class technical expertise and system-integrated solutions. Rewind basically deals with test and measurement equipments of electronics, ETHI, Fluke, Megar, and many more. Rewind is the official channel partner partner for the Technotronics India, Flip, Megar, Kately, Tech, etc., and other range of products. So I welcome you on behalf of Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, MIT Corridor Barship. We have another speaker, Mr. Ruben Sayed. Sir is working as an application engineer in Rewind Technology Private Limited. Sir is having more than two years of experience in the field. Owns, sir has won Smart India Hackathon Hardware Edition in the year 2020, providing various test and measurement solutions and solving n number of queries related to test and measurement equipments for various companies like Minda, Force Motors, Bajaj, ARDE, and many more and have worked on robotics, thermal imaging, power quality analysis, and other solutions also. Along with this, Rewind Technology and MIT Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, MIT College of Railway Engineering Research, Barshi, has an MOU with, as an industry per MOU. Again, Rewind Technology and Department of Electronics and Telecommunication, MIT Corridor Barshi, is also having a tie-up about the recruitment, and many more are there, like as a seminars, webinars. So I sincerely thanks to today's speaker, Mr. Atul Kutsrekar, sir, and Ruben Sayed, sir, has given a valuable time to guide all the participants our, all over the India. So thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request our speaker to please give some overview of today's seminar and start the session. So am I audible clearly, madam? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good morning, friends. Uh, my name is Atul Kuchekar. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Vishnu sir, Professor Dr. Madhugar Lingre sir for arranging a webinar on this advanced technolo testing technology in electronics and other industries. Thanks to Manore sir and Samara madam also 
and all other respective concerns who has put their efforts and who have supported us for arranging this webinar, which can help all of you in understanding what is happening in today's world. Dear students, let me congratulate you first that you are part of one of the renowned organizations like MIT College of Railway Engineering and Research. Give me students, if you put your 100% efforts in your remaining course, you will be having enough opportunities. Your course being focused on the railway engineering, obviously first opportunity you can get enough, getting a job in the railway actually. Market actually in today's days is growing very fast. It's in, in almost every domain, like if, if you see the IT industry, maybe semiconductor, automotive industries, and there are enough opportunities or opening in the market or in the field where, where you can, you as a, as, a, as a career, if you think you have a lot of opportunity in the field of design and development, testing, maybe production, maintenance, sales and marketing, IT, etc., etc. So my suggestion will be you to like put your 100% effort with a complete integrity. So like whatever may be your course, professors or teachers are there to help you and it will definitely help you to grow in your career. So let, let, me, let me start with the webinar now. Arvan, can you go to the next slide? Uh, so as uh, briefly uh, introduced by uh, Dr. Vishnu, so Rewind Technologies uh, Private Limited, we have a headquarter at Pune. And uh, we have our footprints at uh, like the Gujarat region, then Bangalore. We have our uh, uh, tie-ups with the uh, Delhi organizations. And it basically are incorporated by a small group of highly qualified technocrats, where actually we, 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 we initially thought to dump some, dump, uh, do some technological work. Our mission was very clear that we want to we want to give some support or services in the equipment field because so, so in the initial days whenever like I was interacting with the industry people we found that there is very limited knowledge in the market on the test and measuring equipment domain so the people or the as a as a researcher whenever they are developing something so they need they need a testing equipment. And it is a very much need of a market that you should have good testing equipment in hand. So unless and until you don't have good testing equipment, whatever the research you are doing, so it, it, it will, you, you may not be able to produce a quality products. So that's why actually we have uh, in the starting itself, we have done a tie up with the people or industries there are some good quality equipments available like Tectonics, Flu, Keithley, Mager, and many other industries are there, actually many other companies are there. So we, we are channel partner for all these companies. So focused on the test and measurement equipments, we have a lot of testing equipments like oscilloscopes, High precision multimeter, then spectrum analyzer. We deal in actually display and the components also, like graphical displays. If you if you see the, the automotive cluster, so there are a lot of varieties available in the graphical displays. You, you, you can see a lot of graphical displays are there. We have the embedded system and design tools. We, we work in the system integration domain also, where we, we, we try to design the products and we, we, we sell it to the 
द ऑटोमोटिव और मे बी इंजीनियरिंग सेगमेंट ऑल्सो नेक्स्ट स्लाइड तो आई थिंक रुबान कैन टेक इट फर्दर फ्रॉम हियर एंड गो थ्रू द लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोडक्ट्स विच यू बिलीव यूजिंग इन द इंडस्ट्रीज वेन एवर यू 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 गेट आउट ऑफ द कॉलेज तो ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर यूर फ्यूचर रुबान ओवर टू यू Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, MIT, for giving this uh, uh, this uh, giving this opportunity to, to me. Okay, so uh, today I'll be going through the details. Like uh, means whenever we any student comes out of the engineering, so they 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 are means not focused on which path they need to choose in future. What will be their uh, scope of interest? Okay. so uh, the main thing which the main challenges which comes into picture is like uh, some of them means they are not able means they don't get a good hands on experience on the test and measurement equipments and uh, some of them they choose a different path like they go in the software domain and uh, they they go in a complete different domain okay so in order to a uh, focus on one specific path like if you are an electronics and telecommunication engineer so uh your your path should be like you need to focus on this uh, means some of might uh, some of them might have this uh, idea that they want to go in the core only so most of them they don't have any idea like uh, what are the opportunities you will be getting in the core companies and uh, what uh, there are softwares also which are available and uh, all the things and how we need to climb to that position okay so uh, coming to this like uh, this this webinar is like uh, it's completely dependent on the technology which we have right now okay so uh, these are the key points which will be taken into consideration during this whole presentation so why we need the test and measurement equipments what are the solutions which are available in the market then uh, what are the software solutions which you can work out on then uh, how is remote teaching uh, i mean so remote teaching then remote operation everything being incorporated okay then uh, online and offline remote analysis with uh, tech scope okay then uh, share data across teams like it is one of the software where you can share the data with the help of drive okay then uh, some more application oriented uh, approach therefore like this mobile co collaborative application then how the educational bench uh, evolved and many more things are there okay so coming to a next slide so why do we need the test and measurement equipments so this is one of the basic questions which uh, which means which which uh, uh, engineer should in mind like uh, everyone in in engineering is a scientist like whoever works on science is a scientist right okay so coming to this point why do we need test and measurement equipment so there are n number of things which are there uh, which are related to the test and measurement equipments okay so first of all let me give you an example uh, suppose one of you have designed a power supply which gives an output of uh, suppose 2 volts and uh, the current rating is around 1 ampere and if you want to verify how the power supply is working whether it is working fine or not and are you getting appropriate result for that so at that time you will be requiring the test and measurement equipments okay so you will be testing and measuring right so uh, what you will be testing whether you are getting the exact voltage and exact current and uh, you will be using uh, some of the instruments like uh, some of the in some of the cases you might use an oscilloscope you might use a multimeter you might use a clamp meter so these three are the main prospects which you will be using but most of them they are not familiar and how and why we use this instruments okay so uh, these are the key points like uh, what are the things which we need to focus okay so why do we need test and measurement equipments to verify if the system is working as per specifications or not okay so as i mentioned that if you have designed a power supply of 2 volts 1 ampere then uh, you need to verify that so is it giving me the exact voltage and current okay to check if there are any external disturbances in the system suppose you have designed an uh, 
let's take the same example of a power supply okay and uh, you have designed this power supply and now what is happening like uh, you have taken it to some other uh, place okay some other environment and there it is having a fluctuation of suppose 0.2.3 in uh, volts in that range okay so you 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 need to verify it uh, like uh, whenever i go in this range i am having this this uh, problems with the instrument right so that is one of the thing to check if there are any external disturbances in the system to predict equipment failure suppose what uh, many of times it happens like if you if you test it to its extreme level so after testing it to uh, extreme level there is a downfall in the uh, in the equipment so which causes a failure like suppose you are operating for one ampere and you are continuously using it for one hour okay so uh, at that time what will happen is uh, the equipment might get failed due to excess heat or something right so in that case uh, you you need to have a profile for this like uh, this you need to have a profile for this that uh, my equipment is failing after one hour so you need to specify this right okay then uh, what are the faults present in the circuit which are which you have designed so like if you're using an oscillator you're using an op amp so what are the outputs whether you are getting uh, appropriate output as per your design and specification so this is one more thing which you can uh, see in this okay then uh, other than that suppose you are going you are you are doing some new researches okay and in this research suppose you you have you want to have a data okay like uh, you want to have the data complete data that at this time is uh, in in a one day period this is the graph of my instrument like uh, whatever you have designed this is the my circuit and this is how it works in one complete day it will have this much variance it will have this much accuracy so you can define those parameters by doing this analysis with the help of test and measurement equipments okay so overall why do we need test and measurement equipments to increase the shelf life to increase the performance to increase the accuracy efficiency everything can be done with the help of this test and measurement equipments like you you might have gone through this like uh, whenever there is any uh, any of the new launches so they first of all they say that it is in testing right so what it is in the testing phase so they are doing all these things behind so that equipment should not fail and it should be completely reliable okay so these are the main aspects which you need to focus okay so in case if you are going in any of the industries for uh, as a test engineer so you need to perform various n number of tests uh, uh, which which you need to uh, the instruments uh, which should not means after doing those tests if the equipment doesn't fail that means the equipment has the capabilities to work in harsh conditions also okay so this is the thing why we need the test and measurement equipments so coming to the next slide uh, i'll be showing you i'll be showing you an example like uh, why there was such an evolution and why it was so much necessary for uh, for uh, increasing this uh, means for for focusing on the test and measurement equipments okay so as you know like uh, previously when we when we when we were into this uh, 1990s and 2000s so there were only uh, this uh, telephones were there right so in that case we, we, we there was a small circuitry was there which was connected with the help of wire and after that it was taken all over through the world so it was having features like you can connect we can call anyone you can speak with them with the help of telephone but later on the technology got advanced uh, the pagers got into pictures and after that mobile phones came into picture the first mobile phone which was there so it was just able to make a wireless call okay that's the only thing which it has and after that the check, uh, the technology progressed you were able to send the uh, sms then you were you were able to send the mms then after that uh, internet was being incorporated in the mobile phones right so as this technology increased uh, there was a means there was means there was uh, an increase in the machineries the uh, increase in the technology also so the previous mobile phones it was like uh, 
a bulky mobile phones which which had some specific future features but now if you compare it with the smartphones which were launched by android okay which were launched with the help of android so smartphones they have various capabilities they can capture images videos then uh, many more things okay so how they are testing this so they are testing it with the help of this test and measurement equipments only okay so uh, these technology it got advanced the chip size is decreasing the production is increasing so these are the factors which uh, take into uh, the these are the factors which uh, work simultaneously okay. So coming to the next slide, so I'll just show you how the things have evolved from uh, starting to uh, raise position. Okay, so I'll just show you this. This was the first multimeter which was launched. It was just able to measure current as well as voltage in the first part. Okay, then after some time, the evaluation evaluation uh, it got some. So this was the bulky multimeter which was being uh, produced by Fluke, okay. And uh, after that, uh, also some modifications were done, and it was brought to such a small size, okay. Then uh, after this, you can see this is the multimeter which we have in today's uh, domain, okay. So can it is. You can see this generation. This one was analog. You were not able to have the highest accuracy in this first multimeter. Then after the evolution, in this you were not able to uh, store the readings. You were not able to save the data. You were not able to analyze or process it. But as the technology increases, this is a complete digital multimeter. Right? In this, you can store the data, you can analyze it. There are various functions which you can perform. Here you can see only two functions were there, like milliamps and volts. And here you can see the functions have changed drastically. You can measure DC voltage, AC voltage, DC current, AC current, current in milliamps, voltage in millivolts. Then you can measure resistance, you can measure diode test, and various things are possible with the help of this latest multimeters. Okay, coming to our next uh, example is like oscilloscope. So this was the first oscilloscope which was designed. So it was just like plotting the graph with the help of a scale or something on a paper, and you were you 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 were getting a graphic means you were getting a, this graph on a page. So that was the thing which was first oscilloscope. Okay. And after that, uh, you, you, you can see these are the digital phosphor oscilloscope. So as the technology increases, this, this was changed to uh, analog oscilloscope. Uh, this, this is generally called as a CRO cathode ray oscilloscope. So in this, the technology was increased, a cathode uh, ray tube was used. But in this, the saving of information, data, images was not possible. So that's the reason a latest oscilloscope, as you can see, as compared to this, it has various features, like it can store images, it can store waveforms, it can store uh, the data on triggers, it has n uh, eight number of channels, it has 48, uh, sorry, 64 digital channels, then it can do protocol analysis, then uh, it can, it can do n number of things. So it is a multi, uh, means it has many, many specifications in one instrument. Okay, so it is like, means a complete hardware which is uh, inc incorporated with uh, a good software and you get this product, right? Okay, so what caused this change? Like you can see the older one, the older multimeter was uh, just a small one which has some features and it got advanced, okay? So conversion of analog to digital is one of the main uh, case here, okay? Then, uh, means as you know that analog signals, it cannot be stored right so that's the reason the technology was shifted towards digital completely okay and it was not uh, you were not able to store the data in analog uh, analog devices okay as you know this analog oscilloscopes then uh, analog multimeters it was just showing a bar graph reading where you you need to uh, note down the readings man readings manually right so 
other like daily upgrades in the electronics and electrical instruments as you know like uh, i give an example of telephone then the smartphones right so it is upgrading daily in in future you might have such kind of phones which are uh, completely transparent also which can be just uh, means technology is like it is advancing day by day we don't know what we might get in future right right now we are testing 5g also so it is done with the help of some of the uh, instruments like spectrum analyzers then uh, some special types of antennas are required for that and it has this it's dedicated software for testing so that's the reason why we why we focus on this uh, test and measurement equipments so if there wasn't any test and measurement equipment it would be a challenge for the engineers to uh, debug the problems which are there right so validating data like uh, if you have some instrument and you want to uh, store that data you want to know how the re how reliable the instrument is then uh, these are the aspects which you can consider why this change was happened okay so coming to a slide so what are the solutions which are available in market and which one you need to prefer okay so what happens is like uh, when you go in the market suppose you want to test any of the test and measurement uh, you want to test any of the circuit which you have designed so uh, you are completely unaware like uh, what are the things which we need to consider the instrument we need to procure right so uh, these are the wide range of uh, products which are available like basics are there then multi multifunctional is there then uh, whether you need to have a software and hardware solution combined or you just want a hardware solution then uh, so which one to choose is the challenge which we which everyone faces so the main aspects which we need to focus is accuracy repeat repeatability and precision okay why i am saying this i'll just show you an uh, image uh, right now okay so that describes how means why these three things are important okay so there is a difference between accuracy and precision some of you might uh, get confused between accuracy and precision okay so uh, you can see this image so it is having a low accuracy low precision I means suppose this is my board of target and i want to uh, achieve it i suppose i'm using a dart uh, uh, i think you you all might be aware of the dart which we uh play like dart game okay so in this uh you can see like if i am firing the at some point okay uh, i want to focus it here but sometimes it is going at this place sometime it is going at this place sometime it is going at this place so this one this one is having low accuracy as well as low precision okay and when you come to this image this uh, image uh, the second part okay so it is having low accuracy and high precision why we are saying because i want to hit at this point here okay but due to some some of the reasons my uh, dart it is hitting at this place okay so i am getting a precise value but which is not accurate okay so this is the thing for low accuracy and high precision so here i am getting a precise value but it is not accurate okay so in this case you can see in this image so it is having high accuracy and low precision okay so why we called it as high accuracy because we are getting the readings and nearby this place only okay but it is not precise means i want all the readings to be in this only sometimes suppose i am getting 1.1 1.09 1.12 so these are the things which can be focused here okay so coming to this point uh, you can see you you want a high accuracy as well as high precision okay so in this case the accuracy is i am getting an accurate result at the center itself and the precise also because all the readings whichever i take suppose i am uh, taking a reading today it is showing 1.1 volt tomorrow i am taking it is showing 1.1 third day i am taking it is showing 1.1 so it is having accuracy as well as precision here it is showing sometimes 2 volts sometimes 1.98 sometimes 1.3 something in that range here it will show only 2.1 2.1 2.1 every day when i connect 
right? Here it will show 1.5, 1.4, 1.3 in this range, but here it will show 1.1 only. So this is the one of the main aspects which we need to uh, take into consideration, like accuracy, it is getting repeated with the precision, right? So this is the thing which we need to consider while taking any of the instrument, okay? So coming to our uh, next slide, so it is like a solution for education, okay? So uh, university lab equipment designed to prepare, like why, why we need a solution for education, okay? So uh, the next generation of engineers, they, they, they are being trained in the schools and colleges, right? So that's the reason education test bench is a very important and must thing for students, right? If they don't have any hands-on experience, they, they will face challenges in the future in, uh, in the, uh, for this test and measurement equipments, right? Suppose one of the, uh, some of you might be a complete, means if, if you are having a good knowledge of uh, theory part, but uh, if you don't know how the equipments work practically, right, you might say face some challenges like uh, in theoretical, it be showing around 1.8, 1.9, but in practical, sometimes it might show 5 volts, sometimes it might show 3 volts, sometimes it might show the actual value. So you will be aware like why it is showing this value and why it is showing the other value. Right. So you can debug it, you can go through the process, have you done the connections and everything right. So this is the main reason, like the tomorrow's world is built by today's engineers and those engineers need to have this facilities. Okay. So coming to this, uh, why do we need test and measurement equipments? Okay. So if the instruments if students aren't aware about the test and measurement equipment, they won't be able to do the testing in future. Study practically, as I've explained uh, previously, that practical studying is one of the best studies which you can do than uh, to view the graphical patterns of the signal, right? So you can see this, I means uh, suppose you, uh, let's take an example of uh, you want to plot an IV curve of a diode, right? So in, in colleges, you might have studied that it will slight, the voltage will slightly increase until it reaches a breakdown voltage. After the breakdown voltage, it will give a sudden push, right? So this is the thing, like you, you have studied it practically, but to verify it physically, so there are specific uh, instruments which are available to do this IV characteristics. So we have a source and measure unit which can do, which can plot this graph and which can show you that I am sourcing two volts, one volts, 0.5 volts, and I'm getting this type of graph. Like, uh, and if you, if you go in this, uh, in elect in mechanical and uh, in civil also so there and electrical and electronics all of them they have this uh, thermal imaging is there so which very few of them are aware so it is like uh, uh, i'll show you one video in uh, further slides how the thermal imaging is being done means how it derives the thermal patterns how it senses the heat what is EMI, EMC testing, then vibrations and many more things. Okay. So coming to the software solutions. Okay. So these are the software solutions which we, uh, which generally the students need to work on like PCB designing tools and PCB simulation tools. Suppose you want to design a circuitry and uh, you, you, you don't have this uh, PCB designing tools. You might be good with papers and pen, right? but you need to do it practically. So this is one of the software which can help you out to design. Like you can see, this is one of the e catcher software. In this, the circuit is being designed and it is being uh, uh, viewed in 3D view. So these, this is the spare, this is the technology where it has reached. Means you can see this image, how this uh, designing tool has been upgraded in in previous uh, like in previous versions when it was just started so you were just able to draw these lines and uh, a capacitor symbol was being placed and uh, after it's 
it's you are not able to see the complete diagram which you have like this okay so this is the technology where it has reached at this time so this is an e catcher software and it is a very good software where you can do all this pcb designing then simulation then circuit simulation software is there where you can play some ic's and uh, you can work out on this okay then we have some remote controlling software where you can control this uh, test and measurement equipments remotely and uh, you can do the so that we have a uh, development softwares which can which it is generally uh, like labview and all those softwares so you can develop your own software along with the hardware so this is the things which are possible today okay so in in our means uh, when you go a pre uh, when you go previously to, for five to six years so at that time this technology was not there at its peak right so this is the latest technology which we have in uh, today's world okay so let me show you one example means uh, one one uh, one detail of uh, how the remote teaching can be done with esco okay so it is a software which is designed by tectonics which can uh, take the remote control as well as the remote view of the instrument so it is like completely controlling the instrument with the help of a ip address or uh, connecting it to the net okay so you can take the instrument on the ethernet uh, and you can control it wirelessly from any location uh, and you can take each and every readings and many more things with the help of this software okay so coming to this software let's take an example for this okay so i'll just show you an example uh, how this software is and uh, 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 how it uh, means it works so this is just an example of uh, uh, one of the high-end oscilloscopes you can just have a look at that like it is a 5 series mso and six, 5 and 6 series mso and it is being uh, uh, taken in uh, function of this Let's take a look at an easy way to remotely control your oscilloscope using nothing but an Ethernet connection and a web browser. So this is the oscilloscope and with the help of this software, you can take this complete uh, screen uh, on your laptop or your mobile or tablets, whichever you're using. Okay, so this is the complete screen. There is some setup procedure which they will just show us. E and to okay. get started, you connect. <laughs> Control your browser. This feature is called eScope. And to get started, you connect up your scope to your network with the Ethernet port on the back of the scope. And then take a look in the utility I.O. menu to see what the IP address is that was assigned to the oscilloscope. You can see in this case that my scope was assigned 192.168.1.17. We type this into the address bar for the web browser. That brings up the LXI screen for the oscilloscope. So now you can see they have entered this IP address in the PC. Okay, and now it is showing the details of the oscilloscope, what which oscilloscope is connected, and uh, what is the serial number, firmware number. Everything is displayed here. Okay. Next, simply click the instrument control eScope link on the left hand column. Now, an exact replica of what's on. Okay, I'm facing some issues with this. Now an exact replica of what's okay. on. Okay, so here you can see they have taken the complete remote access of the oscilloscope and it can be controlled uh, completely from this point, okay. On the scope screen appears in your web browser and you can simply use your mouse to control all of the aspects of the scope as if you're sitting right in front of it. Perhaps you're working in an environment where you can't physically connect your scope to your ethernet network or you want to connect to the scope wirelessly, you've got a way to do that as well. You may be able to utilize a device like this. This is a little nano router that I have from TP-Link. They're offered by uh, many of them. So they're using this router in order to connect the oscilloscope wirelessly to the tablets and uh, other uh, 
PCs or instruments. Or manufacturers. This could be configured so when I can turn this device into an access point. We connect up the Ethernet port to the Ethernet port on the back of the scope, then powered up with the USB cable also connected to the back of the scope. And we just check which IP address was assigned to the scope from the access point. Now with your device, like my old uh, iPad here, uh, connected up to the access point, you can open up a web browser and connect up to that IP address. And we come up with the LXI screen for the scope. And we touch on the instrument control e-scope link. Now we have remote wireless. So as you can see in this image, like this is the high-end oscilloscope which we have at this place, which is Tectronic 6 Series MSO. And it is being, uh, completely controlled by this uh, tablet which you are using. So you can take this tablet anywhere and you can control it uh, from that position. Access with the tablet to control our scope. So this is the technology which has incorporated uh, right now. Like previously, you were not able to do all this kinds of stuff with the help of an oscilloscope. Generally, when when we were in college, so at that time, we were just able to uh, take a screenshot and do a printout for the same. These are the, some of the high-end specifications which we have here. Okay, so coming to this uh, on and offline analysis. So this is one of the software which is uh, designed by Tektronics and uh, it has the features to control uh, three to four oscilloscopes uh, remotely and uh, you can do the post analysis also with the help of this okay so this is one of the thing then uh, we have this uh, tech drive it is one of the feature uh, in this oscilloscopes like uh, you can add this drive to the Tektronics oscilloscope and you can upload the data and you can access it from anywhere where you want okay so you can access the complete data of the oscilloscope in the help of this software okay so uh, generally in iot like uh, iot is basically it works on this uh, millivolts nano volts nano amperes factor amperes because it requires very less power consumption right so in order to monitor this data we have some software which is called as uh, uh, this state which can take the remote access of multimeter so multimeters also can be taken accessed uh, multimeters can also be accessed remotely okay and uh, other than that it has the features of taking remote access for data acquisition systems as well okay so coming to the educational test bench so so this is one just an overview like uh, what an educational this bench should include okay so multimeters or clamp meters what are there okay so these are generally we will just go through each of the products in our uh, coming slides okay so what is a multimeter why it is used and uh, what is the oscilloscope so these this is preferable that uh, the student have ha uh, hands on for this instrument so multimeter is there, then clamp meter is there, oscilloscopes are there, data loggers, source and measure unit, power supplies, electronic loads, real-time spectrum analyzers, then thermal imagers, then softwares like just which, which I just showed uh, previously. Okay, so coming to the multimeters and clamp meters. So multimeters, they generally work on the principle of uh, Ohm's law, you know, V equal to IR. So that is the general formula which is used by multimeters. Okay, so clamp meter, it, uh, this is this is just an example of a multimeter which you can see in this, I'll just point it out. So this is just an example of multimeter and this is an example of a clamp meter. So with the help of multimeter, you can perform various operations like measure voltage, current, temperature, resistance, diode, connectivity, uh, transistor testing, diode testings, and many more, okay? With the help of clamp meter, you can measure uh, current, you can measure threshold, uh, you can measure this uh, uh, inrush current, you can measure voltage, voltage, there is a uh, other means, uh, there is a socket given for measuring voltage as well. So these are the things which you can do with the help of this, uh, uh, multimeters and clamp meter so application for multimeter clamp meters they are used in iot then motor testing ev testing electricity testing then circuit testing and many more are there so generally they are used to debug the problems caused in uh, this electronics uh, 
instrument then uh, uh, the pcb boards and um, generally it is used by electronics electrical mechanical robotics and instrumentation engineers okay it is oscilloscope okay so there are n number of oscilloscopes which are available in market like uh, you might be aware of that uh, crt uh, cro is there which is a cathode ray oscilloscope which was uh, an old technology which uses analog <coughs> rays in order to do this uh, processing part then we had then after that uh, digital storage oscilloscope they came into picture in which you were able to store the waveforms images and uh, you you were able to process the data okay then digital phosphor oscilloscope uh, came into picture which were uh, having this uh, digital phosphor technology as well as this digital technology mixed together then we have this mix signal oscilloscope which was having mixing of uh, analog as well as digital channels okay then after that uh, we came uh, like the technology advanced and we got this mixed domain oscilloscope so mixed domain oscilloscope they generally have this mixing of domains like there are actually two domains rf domain and time domain okay so it can it can be uh, it is generally considered as a 6 in 1 instrument where it can measure uh, it can be used as an oscilloscope then uh, spectrum analyzer then logic analyzer protocol analyzer digital voltmeter frequency counter then uh, protocol analyzers and power analyzer and many more features are there other than that it has inbuilt arbitrary function generator also so uh, as you can see the previous technology it was having just a cathode ray tube which which, which was just able to show you the graphical image of the uh, the waveforms but now you can do the complete analysis for this okay then we have some handle oscilloscopes also there which are uh, generally used in uh, with, with, with which is having inbuilt batteries and uh, uh, which are generally used in automotives then uh, pc based oscilloscopes are there so these are also generally used in automotive <clears throat> okay so the basic use of the oscilloscope is to graphically display varying signal with the help of a specialized probe so there are various probe to measure voltage current high voltage low voltage so there are n number of varieties which are available which you can just go through uh, for selection of this okay so what are the applications where you can use this uh, oscilloscope so you can use it on field service like as we can see this handled oscilloscope then and you can use it for calibration purpose you can use it for measurement of voltage frequency then you can use it for data validation then compliance testing network testing automotive automotive ethernet testings and many more things are there okay so oscilloscope is not just a oscilloscope in today's world it is a it means many in one instrument in, in today's time okay so coming to the next point like where it is uh, used in uh, educational labs okay so it is generally used by electronics electrical mechanical robotics and instrumentation engineers okay coming to uh, this next path which is data logger okay so generally a data logger is a data logger is an instrument which uh, which which has the capabilities to uh, store the data in the form of graph images or in the form of a trend plot okay so what are the details which you can store in a data logger so coming to the details which you can store in a data logger so it can be <coughs> it can be stored uh, like the temperature can be stored like it it will plot the graph for various uh, uh, plots okay so in in data loggers you can measure up to 500 and 600 channels at one time okay so this is one of the specialties of data loggers okay so you can store the data for temperature voltage resistance frequency period then uh, uh the current is there and many more things are there so total 15 measurements uh, are there like capacitance then uh, resistance and all those things so these things can be incorporated with a data logger and you can use it 
uh, for storing the data, for recording the temperature. Suppose you want to analyze a motor or something. Okay, so in this, what what they do is they use some thermocouples or uh, <coughs> they use some thermocouples and they place it on the motor and uh, they take the readings with the help of this thermocouples and uh, they come to a conclusion that after 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 rotating at this speed uh, for this much time the motor is generating this much heat and uh, simultaneously they can measure the voltages current and if you want to measure uh, the room temperatures of all the suppose a complete building if you want to measure the temperature simultaneously so it can be possible with the help of the data loggers which we have okay then uh, Coming to the application part, what are the applications where uh, this data logging is used? So monitoring device like uh, temperature, monitoring room, factory temperature. Okay, so device temperature, as I mentioned, for this uh, 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 this motors, then uh, you can monitor the temperature, factory temperature for factory room and a complete. Uh, environment okay then monitor voltage current and many more things are there it is highly used in example acdc motor testing automotive testing then uh, temperature uh, measurement and uh, generally uh, there are various thermal chambers are there in which this uh, sensors are placed for this data loggers and it logs this data Okay, so uh, many applications are there for data logger and uh, and uh, it, it is used in this electronics and uh, uh, electrical domain also. Electronics is generally for this IV char characterizing, uh, characterizing, you can just take a reading of voltage on one, one graph and for the current on one graph and you can correlate the same. And it is generally used by departments like uh, electronics, mechanical, electrical, robotics, instrumentation engineers. Okay. <clears throat> so coming to our next uh, next uh, instrument. So it is a source and measure unit. So it is generally a five-in-one instrument. Okay. So it has the capabilities to source as well as a measure simultaneously. So this is generally required in uh, IC testing and uh, this uh, IC characterization and many more things. So SMU source and measure unit, I'll just brief you about the instrument. So it is generally a even one instrument. It can source voltage, it can source current, it can measure voltage, it can measure current, it can uh, measure resistance, it can measure power. So these are the things which can be performed with the help of this instrument. So it is a highly compact instrument which can do all these things okay so as you can see it is an instrument that precisely source voltage or current simultaneously measure it measure the same so it is a combination of multimeter power supply true current source electronic load and pulse generator so you can you can define some pulses also and you can draw it with the help of uh, this source and measure units okay then what are the applications? It is like uh, IV characterization for various ICs, then semiconductors, IV curve tracing for various transistors, diodes, MOSFETs, and many more things. It is generally used in uh, electronics, uh, in, in used by electronics engineers and chemical engineers, and uh, those who work on this uh, adhesive technologies and those things. Okay, so coming to uh, uh, next part which is ACDC power supply. So this is one of the most important instrument which is uh, generally used by all the labs and all the all, all the uh, companies and everywhere. Okay, so why it is such an important? Okay, so power supplies are used for wide, wide range of application from training the next generation of electrical, electronics, mechanical, every engineer they have means oh, 90 to 95 percent engineers they 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 must have an idea of what a power supply is okay so it is generally like it it converts this uh, ac signal to dc signal okay and uh, and convert ac to ac as well okay and uh, depending on your requirement it will source the uh, voltage okay so whether you need a dc power supply uh, that provides basic sourcing or not that pushes the limit okay so this is just for like uh, 
suppose you are designing an ic or something and uh, you source some voltage to it okay and uh, the voltage is like specified in the data sheet that you can store up to 12 volts okay what you want to see what what is the effect if i source greater than 12 volts so that you can't do with the help of a fixed uh, voltage ic right so what whatever the set is that it will be fixed on a specific 12 volts only okay so in order to increase that you can use this power supplies and you can give this uh, put to that uh, specific ic okay then uh, what are the types of power supply generally most of the people they they don't know about this like uh, they there are in number of there are various types like there are programmable as well as non programmable power supplies okay uh, then we have variable and fixed uh, power supply also so programmable is uh, generally the power supplies which can be configured with the help of, which can be controlled remotely with the help of pc or plc so these are generally called as programmable so it has the voltage varying range from 0 to whatever voltage uh, which is specified by the company so you can vary from 0 to 5 volt 0 to 10 0 to 20 whatever volt you want to vary you can do it with the help of this by programming it with the help of pc like, like you want to give a staircase i want 1 volt for 5 seconds 2 volt for 10 seconds 3 volt for 1 second so you can do it with the help of this uh, programming through the pc and you can give it to the uh, power supply okay then uh, <clears throat> if you want to uh, if, if it's a general power supply which uh, cannot be controlled to, to, through the PC, so it is generally called as non-programmable power supply and uh, it can be the voltage in that power supply is also can be uh, adjusted from 0 to 30 volts manually. You, you need to press some buttons on the power supplies, you need to rotate some knobs. So that is a thing where we called it as a non-programmable, which cannot be controlled with the help of PC. Okay, coming to the variable and fixed power supplies. So variable power supplies are those which uh, which has this varying voltage, like you can vary it from 0 to 30 volts. And fixed are like, uh, it has some fixed specific value, like uh, suppose 5 volt power supplies there which is a fixed voltage okay so you cannot vary the voltage in that case okay so uh, this is just an overview of what we uh, what i have described to you right now okay so coming to the application part what what is the application for uh, power supplies so they are used as a battery source so this is one of the main thing like whenever you are using any when you have designed any uh any of the electronics electronics instrument okay so at the time you if you are not able to uh, give a constant dc power supply most of the electronic items they work on this uh, batteries or cells and uh, something like that so if you are not able to give a constant voltage source or uh, to it then it, it might get uh, damaged or something if you if you convert it and if you give it okay so uh, that's the reason a power supply can be used uh, the drawback for using batteries is like uh, when you are in, uh, when you are in uh, research phase okay so what happens is the batteries they get drained too fast as you are not aware of the total power consumption and uh, and you you need to recharge those batteries again and again or you need to buy some of them if if, if it is uh having means if it is a non-rechargeable battery so you can replace that and you can use a battery a, a power supply in that case okay and uh, other than that you can convert ac to dc for a specific voltage then uh, you can provide dc voltage to the motherboard of the adapters peripherals devices and many more things if you want to suppose there is a test where you want to check uh, like uh, uh, you might be aware of the instruments which you get uh, in, in today's world like the old tvs they they were like uh, this uh, crt tvs were there right so it was analog tv so they 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 required a specific uh, line frequency which is 50 hertz and uh, a specific voltage which is 230 volts which is uh, plus minus 10 
So it can vary from suppose 210 to 240. In that range, you can source the voltage. But in today's uh, TVs, you can, if you TVs or whatever chargers are there, adapters are there, you can check on the back side that input voltage, it is specified as from uh, 110 to 230 or 240 volts. Okay, so why this is happening? Because they, they are testing it in the range of 110 volts, 120, 130, 140 and it is working up to the specification in that range also. So that's the reason they are specifying that you can use this specific uh, instrument in this range, okay? So it is generally used by electronics, electrical, mechanical, robotics, instrumentation engineers, okay? So this is one of the main uh, bench uh, instrument which you should have at your uh, place, okay? So coming to the electronic load part, okay, so electronic load is completely opposite of that of uh, power supply, okay, power supply, it sources the voltage, okay, but electronic load, it sinks the uh, the voltage and current, okay, so it is just like you can have a, electro, uh, a resistive load or a RLC load, so resistive load just gives you some of the resistances and uh, with the help of that, you can just, it can draw some voltage and current from the instrument, okay? So now what is the technology which are being used in this loads also, okay? So uh, coming to this part, like what, are, what is the technology which is used here? So as you can see, uh, there are special electronics loads which are designed in uh, today's life, okay? So what are they? They are like, uh, you can use this uh, loads, suppose if you, if you are taking, if you are taking an amount of, suppose one kilowatt of energy from the instrument, you are uh, loading it, okay? And, uh, that 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 much energy that needs to be uh, like it it needs to be stored somewhere right so it generally in old electronic loads it was like it was being dissipated in the air with, with the help of heat uh, it it was dissipated somehow but today there is a means a, is a technology where the load whatever values it takes, like suppose it is taking one kilowatt of uh, energy, so it is, uh, it is, means it is giving out 95% to the grid line where you can use that 95% uh, of energy in, uh, in today's, in, in your day-to-day -day life, okay? So it is like storing that energy as well, okay? So that is the technology which has won in this uh, electronic load and uh, DC supplies also. Okay, so it is a test and measurement equipment designed to sync current and absorb power of output source. Application for this, are, it can be used as a load for battery. battery. Suppose anyone is designing a battery and he wants to test how the battery performance is when you apply some load. Okay, so you, you will be not aware of what is the load capacity of uh, anything, right? Okay, so if you want to, suppose I want to connect a TV to that uh, specific battery. So I won't be able to connect it directly, right? So for that, I need some conversions and I need some circuitry to do this operation. Okay, so in order to avoid that, we can just use uh, electronic load in place of that and uh, it will just sink that much energy what we have specified from the uh, this battery. Okay, coming to this uh, DC-DC converter, so it is like converting DC to DC. Okay, so some of the times like you have a battery which is there, okay, and you want to convert that specific voltage and drop down, like step up, step down, and you can just uh, do this and analyzes okay then chargers are there adapters are there batteries uh, are there then solar panel so solar panels are there fuel cells are there and many more things so generally solar panels is like whatever energy they produce it it needs to be sent somewhere and stored right so in in uh, in order to do, to do the testing it can be uh, sent to electronic load where it can check the uh, feasibility that it can sustain that this much of load okay then uh, it is generally used by electronics electrical mechanical robotics and instrumentation engineers okay Coming to our uh, next, coming to our next uh, uh, 
next topic so it is a real time spectrum analyzer okay so this is one of the uh, important technology which is used in uh, today life okay so <clears throat> all the things like 5g testing 4g testing then wi-fi testing bluetooth testing it is done with the help of this uh, spectrum analysis okay so whatever the spectrum is generally like it is in the frequency domain of the uh, signal okay so if you are having a sine wave of 1 kilohertz in the frequency domain you will be able to see just one spike of uh, at 1 kilohertz frequency and that will have some uh, specific magnitude okay so that analysis is done with this real time spectrum analyzer so what are the application for uh, uh, spectrum analyzer so it, it it generally works on this like uh, taking the spectral data and analyzing it okay so general purpose like rf uh, record and playback okay so now if you are using any bluetooth device in order to share some data so that you you won't be able to do the testing uh, in the real time okay so and if you want to measure that signals also that will also not be able and not not be uh, available on any of the signals or means any of the oscilloscope okay in order to do that you need the spectrum analyzer it will record that uh, data whatever sharing its uh, amplitude its sorry its magnitude and uh, the the speed at what it is coming and going back everything will be done so rf record and playback then emc compliance testing is there so uh, generally whatever instrument you are using okay so whether it be a mobile phone laptop tv anything so it needs to go through this uh, emi e pre compliance test okay so it is a very important test which is uh, which every instrument should have of i mean uh, it should be every instrument should have this uh, specific thing okay that they should pass uh, through this uh, uh, test okay so uh, generally whenever you are using so why why this test is done because uh, suppose if there are any uh, harmful radiations or something which are there so that that can be uh, removed with the help of this emi emc com uh, compliance testing okay then spectrum moni monitoring then radi radio location interference hunting so generally whenever you are using any uh, drone or something so at that time if you want to locate it like at uh, what location it is moving you can use this uh, emi emc uh, sorry this uh, interference hunting then uh, you can use it in radar electronic warfare wi-fi analysis bluetooth analysis then uh, antenna testing and many more applications are there which are uh, considered for this real time spectrum analysis okay so uh, in the next slide i'll just show you an uh, a video which shows that how the 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 generation of uh, spectrum analysis took in years and how it is being developed day by day. Okay, it is generally used in electronics, robotic, instrumentation, engineers. Okay, generally for this low voltage applications like wireless applications, it is used. Okay, so I'll just play this video. Heritage. It's where we've been shapes where we will go. Tektronix has a rich heritage in spectrum analysis. For more than half a century, Tektronix has been developing technology to help engineers see and navigate with ease and confidence. In 1964, with the world racing towards space, Tektronix made its debut into spectrum analysis, adding a spectrum analyzer plug-in module to the Tek 530-540 oscilloscope developed for NASA. Then, in the late 80s, Tektronix created one of the first real-time digital spectrum analyzers, developing a custom integrated circuit containing a bank of 1,020... So, as you can see, this was the first spectrum analyzer, which was, means, uh, means not first, but uh, the one which was uh, dedicatedly designed for spectrum analysis as its size was too much bulky. Okay, now they are continuously updating it. That innovation led to the next innovation. In 1995, Sony and Tektronix worked hard to create a faster and more cost-effective real-time spectrum analyzer. At the turn of the century, 
Electronics added revolutionary DPX digital phosphor spectrum display technology to significantly improve real-time spectrum viewing. Today's real-time spectrum analyzers are powered by signal view software. So this is the one which we have, the latest one. It is just, uh, you can hold it in hand. You can connect it with any of the uh, pad, like iPads, and you can take it anywhere in uh, in the society. Okay, so that is the uh, new generation which we have here. Okay, so it has all the specifications like spectrum monitoring, RF compliance, emission testing, wireless and IoT design, signal intelligence, all these things. Yeah. They enable engineers to see smaller and faster signals with ever-increasing speed and accuracy. Tektronix's real-time spectrum analyzers pack high performance into a compact, portable, and affordable form factor. We're proud of the heritage we've built so far. We're not stopping here. We will continue to build real-time spectrum analyzers to meet your signal analysis needs. So this was just an example for this uh, spectrum analyzer, okay? Coming to our next point, uh, which is a thermal imager, okay? So it is also one of the important equipments which, uh, which is generally used in uh, every type of industries, okay? So it, it generally works on uh, like... Uh, it generally gives out some IR wave, uh, IR fusion, okay. And uh, depending on the depending on the uh, the images, what it gets it back, like okay. So it it it, it analyzes those images and it uh, shows the heat pattern of that, okay. And it it is such it is uh, such uh, smart technology in which you can sit at a distance and you can measure the temperature of uh, various things like suppose you, some some of the people are there at uh, some distance okay so with the help of this thermal imagers and thermal imaging technology you can just measure the temperature so it was generally used in many of the hospitals and uh, many of the hospitals and many of the uh, this uh, this uh, government organizations as well as uh, airports in this COVID period where they, they just placed this camera and uh, they do did some programming and if someone was having higher temperature as compared to uh, the normal one, suppose if someone is having uh, this body temperature greater than 97, so they, they, were, uh, they were marked out and they were being removed from this uh, lines and from the queues. It was that much accurate, okay. So so it is generally used in uh, various engine testings like uh, the previously the engines which were there so they used to heat up uh, at some extent when you when you when you use it at its higher uh, its peak efficiency okay so uh, what what happens is like due to heating there are some of the uh, with some of the changes which are there like the size of the the size of the the shaft it gets increases as you know, the metal uh, increases in size when it gets heated right so that is one one of the thing okay and uh, many more applications are there for this thermal imagers like automotive then calibration electric vehicle heat analysis then uh, it, it it is generally used in pcbs also so uh, you can just place this cameras on the pc uh, pcb okay and you can get the temperature of even a single track also so that is where the technology is today okay so previously we were not even able to get the details of uh, what the ic temperature is but now we can get the uh, detail of this uh, <coughs> temperature i mean we can get the details of the uh, this uh, this uh track temperature also so that is where the technology has reached to today okay so this is just a video for uh, how this uh, thermal imagers are and how they work okay so these are two of the high-end series the job requires from, uh, a level of precision well uh, the ordinary system, uh, Announcing Flute. the new Fluke TI-480 and TIX-580 infrared cameras. Delivering 640 by 480 resolution. Okay, so... Four times more pixels than a standard resolution. The infrared cameras. Delivering 640 by 480 resolution. 
announcing the new Fluke TI-480 and TIX-5 infrared cameras, delivering 6 4 by 480 resolution. So you can see in this, like, uh, he's holding this camera and he's able to get the complete heat pattern of the uh, this uh, this tower which is there. He's analyzing it just by standing few meters away from the tower and he's able to analyze each and everything in this case. Right. Four times more pixels than a standard resolution camera. Then super resolution increases that to an impressive 1280 by 960. These new fluke infrared cameras. So, as you can see, uh, if I want to measure the temperature of this this part, I won't be able to do that, right? So, in order to measure this, what is the temperature at this point, this point, this point? So, we'll be also using have this. Uh, that this, superb this uh, image quality. Laser camera. sharp autofocus provides an in focus image of a single okay. target with pushing. So as you can see, uh, when I use this camera, I'm able to see the complete heat pattern. This one is the cold one, and this is the hot one. And I can place some markers, and I can get the complete details at this point also. Multi-sharp focus captures infrared images at multiple depths, then combines them to create a single in-focus image throughout the entire field of view. There. So this is one of the motor which is there and they are using this camera to analyze the heat of this motor. And take the mystery out of it. So this is a transformer, okay. So generally uh, it gets heated out, okay. So uh, in order to see what are the heat patterns where it is getting heated, suppose inside if there is a cable break or something, you won't be able to get it, right. So that can be done with the help right. of this thermal image. So you, can, precise detail. so you can see these images at this spot. And identify problems faster than before with its five modes. Full infrared, picture-in-picture, -picture, auto blend, IR visible alarm, and full digital. Capture up to five additional photos with equipment details, like serial numbers, conditions, or actual locations with IR photo notes. These additional photos become part of the infrared image file so previously, when, when we were using any of the thermal cameras, so we were not able to get the location. Suppose if we are using, if we have captured it for, uh, from four, among four instruments, if we have captured it for any one of them, okay? Uh, then uh, in this case, we will be able to uh, see this, like, uh, means we can uh, store this images of the serial numbers, then where it is located, we can store all this as a photo note in that. So you might be aware of the notes which we use in laptops and mobiles, right? But in this case, uh, we'll be using this photo notes, okay? So this is one of the new uh, thing which has been incorporated. And are easily accessed when needed. And you have the flexibility to choose your preferred form factor. This pistol grip gives you easy one-handed operation. While the 240 degree rotating lens on the 580 lets you navigate over, under, and around obstacles to hit those hard to reach targets. These new cameras offer all these features plus high resolution, in focus images with more detail and greater temperature accuracy. And both have the rugged quality you expect from Fluke. Bring your best to work with the new TI 480 and TIX 580. So this is the thing which we have now, okay? So just I showed you a glimpse of how the uh, thermal images have been evolved, okay? And uh, this is one of the photo in which uh, it is shown how thermal imager uh, captures the PC, uh, the PCB data. This is one of the image for uh, from this R&D software. Okay, so these thermal images, they have the capabilities to share the data wirelessly to your PC or mobile phones. Okay, so this is the technology where we have today. Okay, so various softwares which are available in market for remotely controlling instrument, for data logging, for remote analysis, simulation, and many more things. So there are just some of the examples for software like MATLAB, Kyle, TechScope, TechBench, Kickstart, eCapster is there, SignalVU, EMCVU, National Instrument, then uh, Xilinx is there. Smart view is there, and many more softwares are there which can analyzers. So, analyzers in such like we have uh, uh, this signal analyzers, vector network analyzers, then power analyzers, signal generators is there. Then we have uh, source and measure units. Then we have some uh, 
meters, like high precision digital multimeters, then data loggers is there, then conductor test system is there. So this is one of the graph which you can see here is automatically plotted by the instrument for IC testing. Then we have the software solutions and coming to this, uh, this is one of our uh, channel monitors like Fluke. We have uh, various things in this also, battery analyzers, calibration instruments, clamp meter, electrical tester, earth ground tester, multimeters, then uh, insulation tester, instead intrinsically a safe tester, then IR window, then we have a uh, laser distance meter. This is also one more good technology which is there in future today. So you can just uh, stand by any any place and you can just uh, point to a location and you can just hit the laser. It will automatically uh, track the distance and it will uh, show you that this is the distance which we have. Then we have this laser levels. These are generally used by civil engineers, then portable appliances, then portable oscilloscopes. Then we have power quality analyzers and process calibrator, thermal imager, and thermometers. And we have various things. Then we have high tech, we have power supplies, then electronic loads, battery analyzer, ATE system, CDs, then we have power meters. And coming to this eCAT star, which I which I've shown you previously, where you can get this 3D image 